I'm going to tell you today about installing a QT flow center for a geothermal furnace. Um, this is my QT flow center here. It's a single pump because I have a three and a half ton furnace. Uh, that's uh, around the cutoff for a single pump. Anything more than that, you should go with a double pump. Uh, I ran the electrical in here. Uh, also, I ran a switch up here so you could turn the flow center on and off, which is very nice when you're starting it up. Uh, the way I started it up, you have a cap here on the top, and this is where you put in your antifreeze mixture. You can simply unscrew it, and then you put in your uh, antifreeze there. Now, for the actual install of it, you're going to come over to your manifold. Now, let's see if you have an internal manifold, um, which I do. And as you can see, I have my lines labeled, line one and one here. You turn off everything but a single line, and then you come over to your pump and you start filling up your pump. Now I used a 20% mixture, and what I did is basically outdoors, uh, mixed in uh, one gallon of my antifreeze, and then I finished up uh, with the five gallons of water, so it was a one to five mixture, 20%. Brought it in here. I used uh, this little pump here made for kerosene. Now if you're using a methanol, it is uh, flammable, and you're not supposed to use this with a uh, with flammable methanol. Um, I think they make a pump version that's not electrical. So basically, I could stick it in here, bring it into here, and fill it up. Uh, once it got pretty full, I'd turn on the switch, get to about the bottom, uh, flip it off. Don't let any air get into the system. From my understanding, this is how the flow center works. As you can see, the water actually leaves out the bottom and comes out the pipes and then comes in the top there and drops into that cylinder. What happens is when the water drops in, if there's any air, it obviously floats right to the when top. When you're filling it, you want to make sure that your water level never gets below that bottom pipe because then it will start bringing in air. That's why I use my um, on-off switch up there to turn it on and off to make sure that it never got below that bottom line. I'd flip it off, bring in my next bucket, fill it up, just keep doing that until you can see the water coming through and no air um, through that with your first pump. Uh, you can do calculations to figure out how many gallons you're going to need. Um, and then once you feel that your first pump or that your first line is done, then you turn off your first line and then you open up your second line. So one, and three and one and three would be off and two would be on. You do the same thing there, fill it up, let it come through, uh, and then you're going to turn off number two and two and then turn on number three. Do the same thing once again and then once you're all three of them are done then you could turn them all on uh, and continue to fill it up. Now as you can see I have valves on each side. I also have PEATS plugs or pressure temperature plugs here that I can check the temperature coming in and out of the water. Now you can check the pressure temperature or the, the temperature through the pressure temperature plugs which is a simple meat thermometer. You want to make sure it gets a small tip on there and you can shove it in there uh, hit your uh, hit your on button there and it'll tell you. I'm in Michigan and we're at the end of March which is the coldest the ground's going to be. My, my uh, water comes in at about 36 degrees still, so not the greatest in the world. My, uh, my trenches are about six feet deep, and it's a six-pipe uh, formation out there. i um, hoping that that gets better uh, next year. So that's a little bit of how I set up my uh, flow center and also how I set up my manifold. This wall here is a fake wall. It's out about a foot, um, and then I've insulated behind there um, so my pipes would come in. That way, if I made a mistake, um, I wasn't dealing with stuff out in my trench. I, I had a little leeway. I could move my wall back and, and change it. Um, just ran steel barbs there um, into PVC. This is all PVC underneath my uh, insulation here. Used the, the rubber insulation there and uh, just used PV, uh, standard PVC. Uh, so you can see the flow here. It comes in from the loops into the flow center, out of the flow center to the furnace, and then back in from the furnace out to the loops from this side. And also up here I have a um, cap that you can release and let air out. Um, you want to make sure when you fill it up to make sure that's good and tight or else you get leaks. Um, I didn't put on my insulation until after I completely installed the flow center. 
Uh, just to look at uh, how we did our flow center, again, you want to follow all your local codes and everything and have it inspected properly. This is how I did it. I'm not an electrician. I'm not an HVAC guy. Um, this is kind of a do-it-yourself thing. Um, and so uh, good luck and have fun.